Welcome to Good Game Spawn Point, the show for younger gamers by gamers. I am Darren. And I'm Hex. And I'm Barjo. Darren, we appreciate your enthusiasm, but please let us go first because the spawnlings get upset if the assistant, that's you, goes before the presenters. <laughs> You're the assistant. <laughs> Coming up this week, Total War Shogun 2 Fall of the Samurai. It's a long title, but it's the latest standalone expansion to one of our favourite RTSs. Enemy Plus, we delve into the Ask Good Game inbox to answer some more of your questions. But first, Street Fighter Cross Tekken! But first, Street Fighter Cross Tekken. Affirmative! Darren. Big name game mashups are nothing new in the world of gaming. Mario and Sonic at the Olympic Games, Tatsunoku vs Capcom, but there's some serious history at play with Street Fighter Cross Tekken. I'm a big Street Fighter fan, so I've been hanging out to see how Street Fighter Cross Tekken plays out, and it's so much fun watching Ken and Ryu KO their Tekken cousins. Negative. Everyone knows Tekken's robot Yoshimitsu is the ultimate fighter. His laser sword conquers all those puny street fighters. Yeah, right, Darren. Yoshimitsu's special move is getting dizzy and falling over. <laughs> Street Fighter Cross Tekken keeps the anime look and basic moves from Street Fighter 4, but it also injects a lot of new twists. There's a huge roster of fighters from both games, and there are a handful of bonus characters like Mega Man and Pac Man. Here it comes! These characters are only on the PS3 version though, so don't go looking for them on Xbox. This game really embraces its new two-fighter tag system. You can switch between fighters at any time. For the ultimate punishment, I recommend tagging your partner in mid-combo. You can even bring both fighters out at once for two against one unfair awesomeness. Yeah, there's no denying this game packs a lot in. The new four-player mode was a real surprise. I thought it worked really well. Being able to tag in one of your friends as your partner makes perfect sense, and it's a lot of fun. There's also a scramble mode where all four players are fighting at once, but that felt a bit too crowded. Bajo, how did you find the mix of Tekken and Street Fighter combat styles? Well, this game was made by the Street Fighter developer, so it plays like Street Fighter, but with Tekken characters in it. I, it would have been nice to have a, a good, serious mix of both, but I think I actually preferred it this way, because I like Street Fighter more than Tekken. I always thought Tekken was a little bit slow. Well, if you're a Tekken fan like me, you'll need to wait for the upcoming Tekken Cross Street Fighter. It will feature the same character mashup, but instead be built with Tekken's 3D gameplay. I did observe some Tekken influences present in this game, however. The way rounds now end instantly when either one of your fighters is KO'd is a Tekken Tag Tournament feature. Don't expect to see noob-friendly features like automatically tagging in your second fighter after the first one's defeated. I think it's important to note that for spawnlings that haven't played a game like this before, they're going to have to get used to a six-button control scheme, which can be a little bit tricky to learn, but it is worth learning. Or you can just go for the button mash, which I am guilty of on occasion. <laughs> What are you giving it, Bajo? I love a good mash now and then. <laughs> I think this game takes the best parts of Street Fighter 4 and puts in some good Tekken stuff too, like the tag team and also those amazing super moves. This is a great fighter. I'm giving it 9 out of 10 rubber chickens. Well, I can appreciate that there's some seriously in-depth stuff here for Street Fighter and Tekken fans, but it would have just been nice to have the option of a simpler button layout for newcomers that was a little bit more accessible, so I'm giving it 7.5. Right, time for the news. Barjo, it's your turn, so off to the Good Game News Desk. Off you go. Excuse me, Darren. Quick I'm sticks. I'm going to read the news when I am good and ready. Chop, chop. Off you go. Into your little jacket and your glasses. <laughs> OK, I'm ready. No one likes a bossy boots, Darren. Put up my own glasses. Don't need to tell me to remind me to bring my glasses. I always bring my glasses. <clears throat> Banjo here with the news from around the world. A growing number of studies have shown playing video games can significantly enhance our brains. One study of nearly 500 middle school students showed the more children played video games, the better they performed at standardised creativity tests. While another study found those who played action games were able to make accurate decisions 25% faster than others, with the most adept gamers able to make decisions four times faster. It also found gamers can pay attention to more than six things at once without getting confused compared to the average of four. 
British PhD candidate Michael Cook has created an AI that develops video games from scratch in just 10 minutes. The AI dubbed Angelina, an acronym for a novel game evolving lab rat I've named Angelina, creates and evolves three individual species, which come together to create the final game. Maps define the playable area, layouts choose the various entities in the world, and rule sets decide how objects move and interact. After combining the three species, Angelina plays the game 400 times to find problem areas which are then discarded. However, humans are still needed to create the audio and visuals. Reports are suggesting that the next generation Xbox will not include a physical disk drive. Unnamed sources have told gaming publication MCV that Microsoft has been informing their partners of the decision under strict non-disclosure agreements. Instead of traditional disks, the console will apparently use a form of solid state memory card. That's the news. And I did it without anyone telling me what to do or asking or telling me how to do it. Nice job with the news there. Thanks, Hex. You'll have to try a better word than that, Goose. What's the robot up to? He's playing quarrel online with Goose. Mm, that's not going to end well. You can do better than that. <laughs> oh, 12 points. Good one, Dazza. Quarrel's a digital-based board game that's all about the power of words. You'll wage battle against your opponents using words as weapons and your vocabulary as ammunition. It sounds like the pen really is mightier than the sword in Quarrel. Essentially, it borrows elements from old board games like Risk and Scrabble and combines them to create a new game that still feels familiar and easy to understand. Uh, once you learn the rules, of course. <laughs> Each game can be played with up to three opponents and takes place on a board that's divided into an equal amount of territories. You're then given a set number of troops you can use to attack your opponent's territories or defend your own. Each time you play, you get a different style of soldier, but for some strange reason, you can't pick which. Luck of the draw, I guess. I personally love the pirates. Yarr. Well, my favorite was the robots. Yeah, robot. the robots. Yeah, I guess that one, Darren. The number of troops you have on each square represents the number of letters you can use to create words with. The more troops you have, the bigger the word, and the more points you'll earn for that word. Every time you attack a neighbouring territory or are attacked yourself, you'll activate a mini battle where each player uses the same letters to create a word. You'll need to create a higher scoring word to win and either defend your own territory or claim your opponents as your own. Aha! Another one to me, Darren. Just like a game of Scrabble, each letter has its own points value, with tougher letters like Q and X being worth far more than easy ones like A and E. You'll then march your troops around the board, claiming territories until the whole board is yours. And that's pretty much it. It's a simple concept, but there's heaps of room for strategy and tactics. When you finish each turn, you'll receive reinforcements, and you can move them around and build up your defences or attacking forces. There are a number of different modes to play, like domination and face-off, but they're just variations with different maps and computer-controlled opponents. Yeah, I didn't mind playing against the computer, Darren, but the difficulty can get pretty ruthless. The AI also feels a bit unfair. For instance, if you both draw in a word battle, the winner is decided by who created a word the quickest, but I just found that no matter how quick I was, the AI was always faster. <laughs> Sneaky. You can jump online and play against a real opponent, which I found a lot more satisfying. It just feels better outsmarting a real person. Sadly though, there's no local multiplayer. I did get frustrated at times when waiting for my turn between goes, especially when I wasn't winning. All you can do is watch helplessly as the computer wipes you out again and again and again. Yeah, I don't want to sound like a bad sport or anything, but I just restarted when that happened. Once you've been bested a few too many times by the AI, you know the game's over and there's just no point watching your inevitable defeat. But overall, Darren, what did you think? It's outstanding to see a game that's both entertaining and capable of teaching you a thing or two about spelling. I'm giving it 7.5 rubber chickens. Yeah, this is a really clever little game and there's some real strategy to it, especially online. I'm giving it 8 out of 10. All right, my turn, Darren. Wonderful review, Goose. We make a great team. Uh, Hex, did those two just sneak a review into the show? Well, I think they did, Bajo. Affirmative. Now it's time for me to present Ask Good Game. <laughs> Let me through. No, you Let don't, Darren. That's our book. 
like. Oh, very well. I'll delegate it to you two. But no slacking. I'll be watching. What is up with Darren? It's like he thinks he's the star of the show or something. Well, he says he's had an email from the boss of ABC, Mark Scott, that says he's the best presenter in the world. It's completely gone to a circus. Oh, you could say that again. <laughs> it's completely gone to a circus. Well, let's show him who's the real bosses and uh, get stuck into these questions, shall we? You know it, Hex. Who's up first? Okay, we've got this one from uh, Darren totally rules the world from Darren is the tops. I think we should just move on to the next one. I'm just going to delete that one. Shift uh, delete. This one's from Cooley Dooley in Brisbane, Queensland. Whoa! Whoa. Oh, do not answer him. Don't answer him, Hex. <laughs> you know who it is. <laughs> hey, good game, SP. In Mario Kart 7, whenever I start in the alley, all the characters are ahead of me when I start at the same time. Is that meant to happen? Thanks. MPS, tell the truth about your real names and Hex. It, the best game of Banjo could be better, and Darren thinks he is so smart, but he really isn't. Thanks. Mm. Could be better. Could be better. Well, we all have room for improvement. Mm. Well, Cooley Dooley, by stepping on the gas at just the right time, just before a race starts, you'll get a rocket boost, which should keep you near the front of the pack. All you have to do is press the gas right when the number two in the countdown stops spinning. If you get it just right, you'll get a nice big boost. But if you miss it by just a little, then you'll get a smaller boost. As for our real names, well, my name is actually Lady Pinkerton II. Mm. And I'm Barjo Baron Bontenikin version Beffenbottom III. All right, Baron, let's move on to this one from Master Strategist in Sydney, New South Wales. Which is named after my father, whose name was Gary. <laughs> What's up, Good Game? I'll make it quick. One, I just discovered a game called Good Game Empire and I think it's really good. Can you give me your verdict? Two, why is Zelda Skyward Sword rated M? Three, what are some good M-rated games that parents might find appropriate for 10-year-olds? Please respond, your number one fan, Master Strategist. Well, we've had a quick look at Good Game Empire, and at first glance, it looks a bit like the new Age of Empires. It's a free-to-play browser game where you build up a castle, town, and army. As far as free-to-play browser games go, it's pretty good. And more importantly, you can have fun without handing over your pocket money for rubies. But I personally prefer the actual real-time strategy of Age of Empires compared to the basic battle screens here. But at least you don't have to download anything to play this. As for why Skyward Sword is rated M, well, according to the classification board, it's rated M with fantasy violence. So due to all that sword flailing, I guess it's a little bit too violent to earn a PG rating. And as for other M-rated games, they are rated M for a reason and are recommended for mature audiences. So you need to talk to a grown-up to work out whether or not an M game might be suitable for you to play. Let's move along to this one now from Isabel Awesome in Mount Gambia, South Australia. Isabel sounds pretty awesome. Yeah, awesome in Mount Gambia. Only in Mount Gambia? Yeah, so she, not she might Mount not Gambia. be so awesome at other places, but I'm pretty sure If I went to sure Mount Gambia, is. would I be awesome? No. Hi, I really love Sims because of the creative designing, but I am looking for something different. I love the look of Tycoon, except on the review I didn't catch the console it's on. Also, can you get carts on Minecraft on the iPod, and if so, how? P.S. Darren is the best. Well, Isabel, there's a few Tycoon games out there, but I'm guessing you mean Roller Coaster Tycoon. And the latest one is Roller Coaster Tycoon 3, which is only available for Mac and Windows PC. There is a new version that was meant to be coming out for the 3DS this year, though, called Roller Coaster Tycoon 3D. But last we heard, development on the game was put on hold, but the official website still says it's coming out this year, so fingers crossed it's not delayed too long. And no, at the moment you can't create minecarts or rails on Minecraft Pocket Edition, but hopefully they'll put that in later. Ah! Oh! Don't answer it, Hex. All right, well, let's get on to this one now from I'm on TV, who is in Australia, that's apparently outside Australia. Darren, we are not going to pick it up, so stop calling. Hey, GGSP, great show. Do you know how to beat the co-op level on Portal 2 where you insert the disc and then you self-destruct? It is so annoying, thanks. I'm on TV, P.S. Darren, you should never charge you laser again. It's bar for your robot health. <laughs> Well, I'm on TV, the good news is you've already beaten it because you're meant to self-destruct. In fact, every co-op course, other than the very last one, actually ends with you having to find a disc to self-destruct. After you blow up, though, you should be dropped back into the main hub and a new area will be open for you to explore. Luckily, you don't feel pain. We won't spoil the puzzle of how to get to them, but just look around and you'll eventually see where you're meant to go. Right, well... Uh, really? Uh, 
on. Okay. What are you doing? No, just grab one and we'll ha- we'll hang up at the same time. At the same time? Yeah. Everybody... Right at the same time? Yeah. On one, three? Two. On three or after three? No, on three, okay. Bato. One, two, three. Yeah. You counted really fast. We could have missed that. Uh, Let's uh, take them uh, off the hook and then he uh, can't yeah. call back. Absolutely. <laughs> Genius. Awesome. Excellent idea. You know what? I think we need to have a look at this email from Mark Scott. This is getting way out of hand. Bring right. it up, Hex. <clears throat> Bring it up on the computer. Uh, here Let's it is. Type it in. You got it? Okay, it says it's from Mark Scott uh, in Mario Land in space. Head of ABC Live in Space. He got back from space last week. I don't think so. Hi, Hex, Bogo, and Duran. Your show is awesome. I was just wondering what your favorite Nintendo one is. I love Mario. P.S. Duran is the bestest presenter ever and should be the boss of the whole world. Keep up the good work, lassering those noobs. You rock, Mark Scott. Well, that's clearly a spawnling who just so happens to be called Mark Scott. It's obviously not the big boss of the ABC. Clearly. I mean, Darren is so silly sometimes. I think the ABC's Mark Scott would be able to spell a little bit better than that. Yeah. I guess his digital mind is just incapable of understanding that there's more than one Mark Scott in the world. <laughs> oh, now he's calling Where's up over phones! From? There's only one thing to do, Hex. The Bucket of Doom. What? Yes. But there's Phone water in. in there. Doesn't matter. Got to do it. It's got to happen. Kitty phone. Put it in the put it in the Bucket of Doom. Bucket of Doom. Oh. By the way, it's not completely water. It does have a partial percentage of custard. I find that helps with the destructive processes. But to answer your question, Mark, my favourite Nintendo character is Kirby because he's just a bit strange. Yeah, and I guess mine is Yoshi because he's really cute. Uh, let's move on to this one now from Zane, uh, who is in New Pre Place in Victoria. All gone. I can see it dissolving. Mmm. Oh. Custard for dinner, though. Hi, Good Game SP. I want to know when is Mario Kart 7 going to come out on the Wii? Please, please, please answer or I will become a noob. P.S. Darren is a noob. P.S.S. Barjo needs high five lessons. P.S.S.S. Hexus is awesome. Well, Zane, sorry to say, but as far as we know, there are no plans to bring Mario Kart 7 to the Wii. It's a 3DS exclusive game, and it doesn't seem likely that they'd ever port it over. Yes, in fact, I don't think there will ever be another Mario Kart game on the Wii, because the Wii U, a brand new Wii console, is coming out later this year, and it's almost a sure guaranteed thing there will be a Mario Kart on that Wii U system. It might even be a launch game, Hex. Oh, fingers crossed. Let's move on to this one now, though, from Sativa uh, in Derby, Western Australia. <laughs> it's spelt Derby, but apparently you pronounce it Derby. I, no, I say uh, Derby. Yeah, well, that's wrong, though, because apparently you say Derby, 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 derby. even though it's an E. It's derby, one of those. Derby, derby, derby. <laughs> it's, fun, it's fun to say over and over again. That, that's, you're, not, you're saying a different word there. No. Derby, 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 derby. <laughs> Hi, GGSP. Can you please answer or I will become a total n n n n n Are there any good Christmas games? P.S. Hex is the Marjo is cool. Darren is so cute and smart. P.S. Please answer. Well, Sativa, you'd think that there would be tons of great Christmassy games, but surprisingly, there's actually hardly any. Mm. There are a few old ones that aren't very good, so less said about them, the better. But the first episode of Sam and Max Beyond Time and Space is called Ice Station Santa, and you have to travel to the North Pole and save Santa. It's a pretty good little adventure game, too. What the hell are they doing here? Uh, I don't know. We all got terrible presents from Santa. So we decided to come to the North Pole and return them. And you can get that on Windows, Mac, Wii, PS3 and 360. And Costume Quest Grubbins on Ice is great, but I suppose that isn't really a Christmas game. It's more like a Halloween at Christmas game. It is DLC for the original Costume Quest though, so you'll need to get that first and then download the Grubbins on Ice add-on. But Costume Quest is actually a really great game, so I'd say it's totally worth it. Yeah, I loved it. It is very short though. We finished it in a single night. But you can get this on Windows 360 and PS3 if you like. But I think on that note, we're actually out of time for this week. And if you've got something you'd like to ask us, then jump on here and send us an email. <laughs> now we should get back to the den of gaming. I hear Darren is about to do a dump. He, what? No, not one. No, he's about to do his, it's his new segment. You'll see. It sounds place. unhygienic. I could have swilled. Oh. <laughs> Can I just have a look and see if I'm gonna... Welcome to Darren's Data Dump, the segment where I dump valuable gaming information directly into your brains. This week, we explore a hot topic of gaming debate, the console wars. The console wars aren't real wars, they're heated arguments between console fans that have been raging for over 20 years. 
In the early 1990s, it was the Sega Mega Drive and Super Nintendo fans, endlessly debating the virtues of Sonic and Mario. In the late 90s, gamers got hot and bothered when debating whether the Nintendo 64 or the PlayStation 1 was the superior gaming machine. And today, PS3, Wii and Xbox 360 diehards troll and rage across internet forums. By releasing new add-ons and many system-exclusive games, Sony, Nintendo and Microsoft add fuel to the fire. Darren's data dump complete. Thanks, Darren. Excellent dump. Well, for strategy fans and armchair generals, there aren't many games that rival the depth of the Total War series. And last year's game, Shogun 2, was definitely one of the best. But now there's a standalone expansion for it called Fall of the Samurai. In Kyoto, the Emperor continued as divine head of state. But real power was held by the Tokugawa Shogunate. Strategy games typically come in one of two flavours. There's real time, like Age of Empires, or turn based, like Civilization. But the Total War series has made a name for itself by smushing the two flavours together into a delicious, chocolatey vanilla swirl sprinkled with a healthy dose of history. Mmm, delicious histories, chocolate sprinkle swirls. <laughs> yes, and while the original Shogun 2 was set way back in the 16th century, Fall of the Samurai fast forwards 300 years into 19th century Japan. Guns and cannons are everywhere and the influences of foreign powers are growing, triggering the Boshin Civil War. As you begin your campaign, you need to pick a side, either fight to restore the Emperor's rule over Japan or maintain the Shogunate. Whichever side you choose, the way of the samurai is dying out and now it's guns that rule the battlefield. Well, Bajo, while gun units have replaced archers, they're typically slow to reload and can be decimated by charging samurai or cavalry. Yeah, that's true, Darren, and it makes for an interesting mix of units and strength strategies, doesn't it? Affirmative. It's kind of a happy middle ground between the gun and artillery units of Total War Empire and Napoleon, with the more popular sword, spears and bows of Total War Medieval and Shogun. And it looks epic as thousands of units line up and start taking shots at each other. I loved how those clouds of smoke hang around and just slowly roll across the battlefield. But you do need a powerful, relatively new computer to run this game on the higher graphics settings. I was also quite impressed by the enemy AI. Enemy armies line up to meet yours and do their best to flank you with cavalry and cause chaos in your lines. It was quite a challenge for my own AI subroutines. But as with every Total War game, the battle isn't just won on the battlefield. That's just a small portion of the war effort. Oh, affirmative. The real fight is one of healthy trade, careful resource management and thought out military campaigns. Oh, and diplomacy is more important than ever. Allying with your fellow supporters of the Emperor or Shogunate is essential since your victory depends on which side controls the most provinces. It's not just about you anymore. Yeah, I really liked that. It's just, it gives you such clear enemies and allies, which makes it feel much more like a full-scale war. And if you're not doing some smart planning and diplomacy, then you're not going to stand a chance in the battlefield. Oh, indeed. And it's important to always keep an eye on your finances and taxes. Without a healthy economy, your provinces will soon begin to riot. Not to mention you won't be able to recruit new units and further develop your province. Yes, and every military unit costs a big chunk of gold to maintain, so you can't afford to simply leave armies lying around guarding each province. It's a real juggling act to keep your economy moving along, your military strong and your people safe and happy. Yes, but that's all old news for the series. On the new side of things, you can now develop railways to move your armies around much quicker. Usually it takes a lot of turns to march anywhere, so using railways and your navy to move around is essential. Navies are also significantly more useful now thanks to their ability to bombard land targets. Charging my broadside! They can cripple enemy infrastructure or simply chip away at armies in their range. In previous games, you could almost ignore building a navy, but now you do so at your own peril. Yes, and if you go into battle with a fleet nearby, you can call in support with some devastating naval bombardment. It's pretty overpowered, but if you have it, you can take on armies twice your size. I also found the naval combat much more satisfying, and that's mostly because of this new third-person mode that lets you put you directly in control of a ship or an artillery unit's guns and aim them yourself. It just puts you that much more into the action, I thought. Yeah, it's fantastic. So let's wrap this up, Badge. 
Well, personally, I prefer Shogun 2 for its wonderful walls of flaming arrows flying through the sky, and I just like the units and the theme of that game a bit more. Personal preference aside, this is a very solid standalone game, and almost as good in its own right. I'm giving 8.5 out of 10 rubber chickens. For me, scheming up clever strategies to conquer that campaign map is as satisfying as ever. I really love this. I'm giving it 9. Oh, and just to be clear, Spawnlings, this is a standalone expansion pack, so you don't need to own the original game to play it. Hmm. Well, it's time to bring another show to a close. But we shall return with more gaming goodness next week. We'll be testing out our ball skills in the new FIFA Street. And a classic PS2 platformer gets a remake with Jack and Daxter. I hope they haven't messed it up. Till then, may all your games be good ones. Darren out. Hex out. Bajo out. Now, Darren. I don't want to burst your little bubble, but I don't think that was actually from head of the ABC, Mark Scott. Oh, it was, it was. No, I don't Darren, think so. I just think that Mark Scott would be a little bit better at spelling than that. Oh, he's a very busy man. He doesn't always have time to spell check his emails. Yes, a whole good game network broadcasting to the entire universe. Hosted by me, Darren the Robot. That's a great idea, Darren. Affirmative. Oh, uh, that's not how you spell Darren. It's D-A-R-R-E-N. Ah, uh, okay. Excellent. Thank you.